Roger, I don't know whether it's a fad or not, but certainly in the last number of years, the number of serious physicists and uh, philosophers who really know their physics are coming to the view of the multi-world theory of, originated by Everett uh, is, um, is not just a nice way of understanding quantum mechanics, but in some sense, in a very real sense, is real. And, and, and that to me sounds just baffling. <laughs> Well, it's where you're driven, I think. You see, for some reason, it's, people have a very strong faith in the formalism of quantum mechanics. When yeah. I say the formalism, I basically mean what we call unitary evolution or the Schrodinger equation, mm -hmm. the Schrodinger equation, which tells you that these superpositions persist. You see, so Schrodinger's dead and alive cat would remain as dead and alive. Now, if you don't try to modify quantum mechanics, if you don't try to modify the Schrodinger equation, say, then what do you do with that dead and alive cat? Well, you see, the argument is somebody comes along and looks at it, and then that person becomes uh, in a, a superposition of seeing a dead cat and a live cat. And the argument then is that these two alternatives inhabit parallel worlds. So I don't quite see that, because it's not what the theory says, in a sense. What the theory says is that the cat is in a superposition of these two states, and then you come and look at it, and you're in a superposition of these two states. So it's not as though there are two different worlds. There is one world which is a superposition. Okay. Now, it's not the world we see, you see. We don't experience that. So the argument, I suppose, there are different versions of many worlds, and I have to be careful, because my Oxford colleagues <laughs> in the philosophy department are very much sold on this particular idea. And so they have very subtle ways yeah. of trying to explain it. But to me, it seems to me, well, you know, it, it isn't two worlds. It's, it's a superposition of these two alternatives. In, in the one world. In, yeah, it's really one world. It's a funny world, you <laughs> see, in which you've got superpositions of different perceptions going on. Now, why can't you have a world with superposition of different perceptions? It seems to me that if we'd grown up with that, we'd be used to it. Mm -hmm. However, they don't like that. They say, no, somehow the world splits or something effectively into these two worlds. One where you're, with one of you perceiving the live cat and one of you, another of you perceiving the dead cat coexisting in different parallel worlds. I don't think that's really even a valid deduction from quantum mechanics because it's not two parallel worlds, it's one super, superposed world. Mm -hmm. And so it really relates to how one perceives things. And this is getting us into the consciousness issue. They don't like that, and they've got other ways of trying to avoid that, which I've never followed, followed completely. But it seems to me that even to make sense of many worlds' idea, you need a theory of consciousness which doesn't allow the superpositions. So in some sense, your conscious perception only perceives one of these superposed worlds. Their argument is that the reason they are forced into multiple worlds is that they are the only ones taking quantum mechanics seriously and following its conclusions without without yeah. smoothing it over the rough edges, so to speak. Well, in a sense, they're right. It, but to me, that's reductio ad absurdum. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is exactly where the Schrodinger evolution leads you. As Schrodinger himself was absolutely clear about, what, that's why he introduced his cat, just to show the absurdity uh -huh. of following his own equation. <laughs> but what all these other people are doing are following Schrodinger's equation in, in a religious way, saying, yes, we mustn't touch this theory. It's got to be unitary evolution has to hold right through from all levels. There, there is a lot of religious uh, <laughs> uh, similarities, in, at least in terms of the sociology, when we get into uh, mm -hmm. uh, the realms of quantum physics and general relativity and cosmology. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we, we find some of the same uh, attitudes that one finds mm -hmm. in religion, these deep beliefs about uh, very strange things. Well, you see, I, I have a, a book which I'm about a decade late in producing, <clears throat> which were a result of three lectures I gave in Princeton about 10 or 11 years ago. The title I gave a little bit rashly was Fashion, Faith, and Fantasy uh, uh -huh. in the New Physics of the Universe. Uh -huh. And the faith had to do with the acceptance of quantum mechanics at all levels. Now we know quantum mechanics works incredibly well for things which are in a certain sense small. Small doesn't mean distance because we know quantum effects can extend right. over right. 143 kilometers yeah. or whatever the current yeah. record is. Yeah. So it's not distance. However, it's mass displacement in my view. So all these things involve very small displacements of mass. When that displacement gets up to a certain, not a critical amount, but the bigger it is, the shorter lived will be the superposition. Mm -hmm. So if you have a 
the live cat and the dead cat, there's easily enough mass right, displacement right. for it to be instantaneously one or the other on this scheme. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a modification of quantum mechanics and therefore a violation of the faith, you see. <laughs> so, but it's not unlike, you say, well, no, we have to trust the theory, we mustn't deviate from <laughs> it, and it is a little bit like a, a religious view, if you like. Um, and uh, I say, well, no, why should we trust that faith? Especially since following it leads us to absurdities. One of them being the dead and alive cat, one of them being the many worlds that you're driven into, one of them being actually certain contradictions with general principles of quantum field theory combined with general principles of general relativity, which do lead to an expectation that there must be something new coming in at a kind of level which one can estimate quite clearly. And that level hasn't yet been reached in quantum experiments, may well be reached within the next decade.